Vertical Church. So glad for you to be with us today. Church on Sunday online. I'm praying that God is blessing you tremendously. And guys, I can't even say it enough. I'm so excited about the new sermon series we're about to start today. So before you do anything else, make sure you invite somebody, you share with somebody. We're starting a new sermon series entitled Over It. I don't know about you, but maybe you need to say it right now, right where you are. I need you to say, I'm, I'm going to be over it. I'm, I'm over it. Everything has been going on in 2020. Everything I've been worried about, all my anxiety, anything I've been concerned about. Through this series, I believe when we meet the truth of God, when we introduce the truth of God to our worry, I'm declaring and decreeing we're going to be over it, church. I don't know about anybody else. I know I need to do some other things for you, but listen. I want to go ahead before we do anything else and go ahead and set your heart and mind at ease. I believe that you're going to be over it through this series. I'm declaring and decreeing and believing through the truth of God, through his scripture, through understanding and knowing him in a new and different way. I believe that through this series, some of y'all are going to get better sleep. Some of you are going to have peace of mind. Some of you are going to have joy like you've never had it before. Some of you are going to have energy just from not spending your time worrying about things that God has already in his control. I believe we're going to be over it. I hope you're excited about this because I'm I'm ready to go uh, today. I haven't preached in two Sundays, so I can't promise you what it's going to look like today. All right, let's get into it. Before we do, let's get into the prayer with God. Father God, we thank you that God, that you address every area of our life, Lord, that in scripture, God, all things are revealed, your truth addresses every single thing. Lord, that there is no one and there is no thing that could ever meet our needs like you. Every area of opportunity in our life, God, we can address it with your truth. God, I pray today that this word is life to us. It is powerful. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would humble your servant now, Lord. Use me as your microphone, that I would magnify the things you said into me. God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you would get the glory out of your word today, out of our time together, and that someone's life is changed. We are coming against anxiety and worry and concern and sleepless nights. Lord, we are declaring peace. We're declaring joy. We're declaring happiness, Father God, in the name of Jesus, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Father God, we love you and bless you. And thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, well, listen, guys. uh, We're going to start this series. Over the next five weeks, we're going to be talking about worry and anxiety. Let me be honest with you. Uh, uh, Here it is that we had a survey a few weeks back, and and I asked you all to participate in this survey to to give us feedback from me as a pastor to, to hear where you all are. And overwhelmingly, anxiety was one of the concerns that people in our church were having. This is not a sermon for everybody else. This is not a sermon for our country or our government or whoever. Make No, this is a message that God said, listen, we're going to do this for vertical church. I saw the results of the survey, and I began to pray immediately, God, what do you want me to do? And God said, introduce the people to my truth. Introduce the people to my truth. What does the word of God say and share with us about how great our God is and how out of that truth that we can approach anxiety and worry? So we're going to be dealing with that this week, uh, the next few weeks. I hope you're excited about it. Again, invite somebody. You know somebody that needs to hear this, but I want you to understand, if you're a part of Vertical Church, God has reworked our plan and schedule for us to preach this word for you. Now, this sermon series, for real, for real, I don't want you cooking and watching this sermon. I don't don't want you doing three or four different other things. I need you to lean in to this word and our time together. Your inward man needs to hear what God is saying through the word of God today. Who you are, I need you to give your undivided attention and focus. Invite your children. Everybody sit down. Try your best. Give it attention and focus. Get out your pen. Get out your paper. Good students do what? You know what? They take notes. I believe this is going to be a game changer for our church and more importantly for your life so you can live on mission. So you can live on mission. Now, we've got a lot of different subject matters to cover when it comes to worry and anxiety, but today I want to start 
uh, uh, with, with the one that I think is really, really a big bold for us to move. I, I'm, I'm jumping right in, and I'm going to attack this thing uh, uh, full speed full, from, from, from the front of this. I want to address some real challenges that I believe we have. And I believe one of the biggest challenges when it comes to our worry, I'm going to jump out and say it, is control. Yeah, control. Let me give you an example. I remember I was living in Greensboro, and my cousin had asked me to watch uh, his kids, my little cousins. I was about 23 or 24, and uh, he wanted me to stay the night and keep the, the kids overnight. The little girl, little boy, and uh, Cameron and Kyla at the time, they were about, about three and about five at the time, real small. And i got to be honest with you, I was a little nervous. And those kids, y'all, can I be honest with you, they were running me. They were Oh, my God, they were running me. Anything they asked for, y'all, I did it. I remember my little cousin Kyla, i never forget, she said she wanted cereal for breakfast, and she looked at me and said, hey, uh, she called me Uncle Ryan. Uncle Ryan, I, I want my milk in a glass and my cereal in a bowl. And I remember, I was like, oh, my God, who is this little kid? And here it is, I did exactly that. I, I was doing my absolute best, trying to look out for my cousin. And I remember uh, their mom called and checked in and said, how, how's it going? How's everything? And th- these were my exact words. Don't worry, I got it under control. I got it under control. And in that very moment, I could hear, I could just hear the conversation between her and my cousin Mitchell. And they, I could hear worry because here's the thing, that where there is no control for many of us, there's concern. And, and I want to address this early on because I really believe that a lot of times we struggle with control. I mean, struggle with worry when we don't feel like there's things are in control. Here it is. Specifically, we struggle with worry and anxiety when things are not in our control. And today, I want to make sure that you know that even though things may be out of control in your life, they're still under control in the hand of God. You got to see this. That, that if you're going to address worry through a biblical context, if you want to uh, get over your worry, if you want to be over it, you have to understand that even though things may not be in control for you, they're not out of control for God. Yeah, you, you got to get that in your heart. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on, but God knows what's going on. I don't know how this is going to work, but God knows how it's going to work. I don't have control of this, but God has control. And I don't need to worry because I got it under control. I don't know who this is for right now, but God has sent me to tell you this today, that what you're worried about, God says, I've got it under control. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't be concerned. I know you don't see it, but I still have it under control. Yeah. See, I, I want you to write this down. This is our main idea today. I want you to write this down. Our big idea, our thought tattoo, my boy, Pastor Jerome will say, write this down if you can. I can be over it when I know God is over it. You got to get that. If you don't get anything else today, you got you to get it. I can be over it when, when I know that God is over it. Whatever that it is in your life. That thing that's keeping you up at night, that thing that has stolen your joy, that thing that has robbed you of peace, that thing is that caused you to cry tears uh, uh, uncontrollably, whatever that is, God says, I'm over it. And see, this is what you got to know. I can be over it when I know God is over it. If it's your finances, God is over it. If it's your family, God is over it. If it's your children, God is over it. The future, God is over it. And today, this is what we're going to be talking about, to, to address this control issue that we have. To address this part of our life where we are worried because of control, we have to learn about the sovereignty of God. Yeah, we, we must learn the sovereignty and the power and the greatness and the supremacy and the authority of God. I love what Dr. Tony Evans says. He says the God most of us worship is a God that is too small, too weak, and too limited. The God that we worship, we, we, we worship him and we say he's great, but the way we worry, man, that the way we are concerned, the way we are up at night trying to figure things out, we, we, we worship a God that in our mind, the way we look at him, the way we live after him, he's too small, too weak, and limited. We often don't know or we forget the sovereignty of God. I know this is something I've taught and preached about before, but it's something we cannot forget. God is sovereign. 
Sovereignty, just make sure we're all on the same page. Sovereignty is speaking of the supreme control over all things in heaven and in earth by the power, by the knowledge, and the authority of God. God's supreme rulership over everything. God's in control. Let's be honest, we all struggle with this area of worry and anxiety for for a few reasons, and we're going to talk about those over the next few weeks, but one of them is we forget that God is in control. And today I want to address this because I promise you the things you are most worried about are the things that are out of control in your life. The things you, you can't control. And right now there are things, especially now, that are not in our control, that, that we can't control no matter how hard we try. And some of you have been stressed out and struggling and exhausted trying to control something you can't control. But here's the good news for us as believers. Here's the good news for us as followers of Christ in relationship with a sovereign God. We have confidence we have peace, and we know the truth that our God is supreme, our God has all power, our God has all knowledge, and our God has all authority over all things. So we can be over it because we know God is over it. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? That God is in control. We must remember the omniscience of God that he, he knows all, we must remember the omnipotence of God, he has all power, and we must remember that, that he is uh, uh, omnipresent, that he is at all places at all times. Our God has complete control. And today, I want to look at a text, I want to look at a scripture that I believe we don't often look to when it comes to being encouraged about the power and the sovereignty and the authority of God. And we're going to look at some of the popular scriptures that we want to consider when it comes to worry. But I want to start at Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 10. We won't unpack all of these verses in our sermon today because we don't have the time. But I believe you need the totality of the text to really understand the message that God is over it. So I want us to go to Isaiah chapter Chapter 45, starting at verse 1. Let, let's go. It says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me. Here's why. That people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. Listen to a church. And there is no other. He says, I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all things. Verse 8, shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down in righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Let the earth cause them both to sprout. I, the Lord, have created it. Verse 9, woe to him who strives with him who formed him. A pot among earthen pots. Does the clay say to him who forms me, forms it? What are you making? Or your work has no handles? Woe to him who says to a father, what are you begetting? Or to a woman, with what are you in labor? 
yeah, let, let, let's go here today because I know I know I read a lot of verses and I'm, I'm going to give you some context here to help us. But, but I believe in this verse, I believe this is one of the hidden treasures in the Old Testament that is a beautiful picture of the sovereignty of God in every situation that we might know that God is over it. And because God is over it, I can be over it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I can be over. Let me, let me give you some context here. In the text, in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 through 10, actually, if you go read verse uh, chapter 44, you'll find that the children of Israel are actually in Babylonian exile. Yes, yes, Isaiah is a prophet to the children of Israel. And here it is that God shares this message through the prophet Isaiah, and he's actually telling him that, listen, let me show you how sovereign I am. Man, I, I'm ready to run. It says, let me show you the authority I have. Let me show you that there's no other God quite like me. Let me show you why you don't have to worry because you serve a sovereign God, a God that has all authority, that is supreme and preeminent in everything. This is what God does. Let me show you how dope God is. God says, listen, I'm going to take, watch this, a king right here, Cyrus. He's the king of Persia at the time. And this king who is who is an unbeliever. The scripture will call him or define him as a Gentile. He doesn't know God. But God says, listen, I'm going to use this king, man, to pursue and open doors. I'm going to use this king to deliver the children of Israel out of Babylon in exile. Wait, 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 wait. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? God's sovereignty is not just over those that follow him. Y'all got to hear this. But his power and authority are even those that don't even acknowledge his lordship. This is the God that we have to remember that's over it. This is the God that's with us. This is the God that's for us. God uses this Persian king who did not know God to free the children of Israel out of Babylonian exile. What an incredible act of grace. What an incredible act of sovereignty. And this story right here hidden in the Old Testament communicates the sovereignty and the power of God. And today we want to look at this text because I, I want you to understand that there is no one and no thing that God cannot use. Watch this for his glory and for his purpose. And this is where it gets tough. Because we want God to use everything for our glory and our purpose. Here's what I'm saying. That, that we can rest, we can have confidence when we know that our God is over it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's go to point number one. Uh, good students, take notes. Here's the first thing I want you to know. Number one, God is over all. Yeah, I'm trying to introduce your anxiety. I'm trying to introduce your worry to a great and mighty and powerful God. And the first thing your worry needs to know is that your God is over every single thing. Yeah, yeah. It's actually right here in verse number one. I love this. It says, thus says the Lord to his anointed. I want y'all to see this, how crazy this is, that God says, listen, how can I prove to someone that I am supreme, that I have all sovereignty? It would be one thing if I use one of the children of Israel to deliver his people. But guess what? I'm going to call somebody that is not a believer, someone that, that does not follow Yahweh, that does not believe in God, that does not believe believe or follow God of Israel, I'm going to use that person to deliver. I'm going to use that person to do my bidding. I'm going to use that person to do my work. But let's see it right here in the text. It says, thus says the Lord to his anointed. The Bible says he calls Cyrus, this Persian king, anointed. Why? Because anointed simply means Hear me, anointed simply means you are a tool or instrument in the hand of God. It doesn't mean you're without sin. It doesn't mean that you're without flaw. It, just, it doesn't even mean that you're obedient. It just means God says, listen, I'm going to use you as an instrument for my will and purpose. Man, I love it. He says, thus says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand, watch this church, whose right hand I have grasped. Whew. 
Do, do you see the power and the sovereignty of God? This is not someone that came to, G, came to God uh, uh, with worship and sacrifice. No, no, no. God says, listen, I'm, I have all power. I have all authority. Even the kings on this earth do not have more power and authority than I do. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say or think about themselves. We see this actually in the picture or the story of the children being uh, 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 led out of Egypt that God was trying to send a message to Pharaoh. You may think you are God, but no, no, no. I am the one and only God, and beside me there is none other. Watch the text. He says, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. God is saying, listen, he's going to do my work. Because I am God over all. What what, what you worried about? What, what what's on your mind? Mm -hmm. What 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 are you trying to carry on your shoulders that God is saying? Why don't you just put it in my hand? <laughs> he says, "I'm God above all." I'm God above all creation. Psalm 147 verse 5 says this, Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. You, you, you're, God help me, you, you're, you're wrecking your mind, your brain over something God can figure out. Some of you are under the stress and weight of concern and worry and anxiety when one of the primary things you need to do is remember when you're working this worry and anxiety out, the first thing you remember that I serve a God that is above all. I serve a God that is above all. John chapter number one, verse one says, in the beginning, y'all know it, was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. God has been, Jesus has been since the beginning. You got to see this, that, that God was there when the earth was created. God, Jesus was there, the Holy Spirit was there when the earth was created. This is our God. Our God is great and mighty. But sometimes... We worry like he's weak and limited. Mm -hmm. God is sovereign. Watch the text here. Job 23 verse 13 says, but he is unchangeable. And who can turn him back? I love this. It says, what he desires, that he does. Oh, man. Uh, Job 42 verse 2 says this, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Here, here it is that Job says, listen, I know you have all sovereign. I know you have all power. I know you have all authority. I know you have all knowledge. I know you are sovereign God and you can do whatever you want to do. And there is nothing and no one that can change that. Here's the problem. I believe a lot of our time, our worry comes when the things that we want could be thought it as opposed to saying, God, what do you want? Are you with me? Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. I love this. It says, in him we have attained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him. Watch this. Who works all things out. Listen to this. Works all things according to the counsel of his will. Listen, when, when God is looking for counsel, only person he can turn to is himself. <laughs> he is all sovereign. He is all knowing. He is all powerful. This is our God. And the question you have to ask yourself, are you looking at this God and thinking of your worry at the same time? See, the thing that I know I have to do every single day is I have to introduce my worry to God. Yeah, I'm worried about this, but this is my God. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to work out, but this is my God. I, I, I don't know if I'm believing this lie or believing the truth, but this is my God. Romans chapter number 11, verse 36 says this, For from him and through him and to him are all things. You got to highlight that. Romans eleven thirty six. 
for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Here it is. Everything comes from him. Everything comes through him. And everything comes to him. Whether it is the perfect will of God or the permitted will of God. If it's something that God actually does or something that God permits. God is in control. I need y'all to hear this. God is over it. He's He's over it. I, I believe one of the things that we have to make sure that we do with our life is that every single day we put all of our concerns, we put all of our worries, we put all of our anxieties, those things that we are concerned about because we can't control them, we got to put them in God's hands. God, I, I know you control. I know you're sovereign, Lord. I know you know what I don't know. <laughs> I know you can see what I can't see. I know you are where I am not. God is sovereign. God is in control. And hear me, until you know, until you embrace, until you truly believe that God is over it, you won't be over it. You will still go to bed at night trying to figure out in your mind how to fix a solution to a problem you don't even really understand. And God has sent me here to tell somebody, calm down, I'm over it. I, I know it doesn't line up with what you think it should be, but I'm over it. I, I know it doesn't feel like what you think it should feel like, but I'm over it. I, I know it doesn't align with your plan and your purpose and what you want to see and your timeline, but God is saying, I am over it. Yeah. So number one, we got to understand this, that God is over all. You got to catch that God is over all. But here it is, number two. Number two, you got to understand this. We are all under God. We are all under God. So if God is over all, all are under God. Man, this is exciting. I don't know about you, but this blesses my heart. This encourages me that when I understand that, that God is over and I'm under, it helps put me in my place. It helps shape my perspective. It reminds me that I have limitations. It reminds me why, yes, God is sovereign and I have free will. But listen, God is over and I am under his control. I'm under his authority. I'm under his power. I'm under his knowledge. And that gives me confidence. Yeah. Have you made the mistake that Eve made in trying to put yourself equal to God? Have you made the mistake of, uh, of trying to put yourself in a place that where God, yeah, I know you created me, and I know I came from dust, and I, and I know that when I came into this world, I had nothing, but, but I really feel like, God, I, I'm on your level. Because let's be honest, I worry like I'm on God's level. I, I, I think about things as if I'm the only one that could come up with a solution. My anxiety would communicate that I think that I am God. And that the world revolves around me and that everything must happen at the work of my hands. Yeah. No, no, no. If God is over all, we are under all. And we don't have to worry when we know what and who we are under. I'll say it again. We don't have to worry when we know who and what we are under. Man. I am under the oversight of God. I am under the provision of God. I am under the favor of God. I've, I'm under the blood of Jesus. Lord, help me. Don't get me preaching yet. Here it is, that when I understand that I am under, it helps me. It helps me have faith in God's plan even when I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show it to you right here in the text, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7 through 10. He says this, I form light and create darkness. Let, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to stop yet. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. Let me stop right here. So just, I want you to see this, that God is saying, listen, if, if you don't get it, I am over the good and the bad. 
I'm over the challenge of things and the great things. I'm over your blessings. I'm over the, your good days and your bad days. I'm over the sunny days and the storm. I'm the God of all things. So even on a sunny day, I don't get too prideful. I don't think too much of myself because I know I'm under God. And when it's a dark day, I don't get too worried because I know I'm under God. Do you see it? But you have to remember what you are under. You have to remember that you are submitted and surrendered to God's authority. So I don't get too, too high when it's going well, and I don't get too low when it's not. This is why we cannot take pride in who we are. We cannot take pride in our nationality. We cannot take pride in our ethnicity. We cannot take pride in the color of our skin. We cannot take pride in our wealth. We have to understand it's all by the grace of God. I love what Paul says. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God because he is sovereign. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is sovereign. He says, I am the Lord who does all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Let the earth cause them both to sprout. Here it is. God saying, both come from me. I'm responsible for both. I, the Lord, have created it. Watch the text now. It says, woe to him. Oh, man, I love when the Bible says woe. Said, Come on now. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Warning to him who strives with him who formed him. A pot among earthen pots. He's saying, be careful when, when you are questioning God. When the creation questions the creator. God, help me. This is convicting me. I don't know about nobody else. He says, but, but woe to that person that, 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 is, that strives or struggles with him who formed him a pot among earthen pots. He says, you're just made of clay. You're, you're just dust from dust. I took you from nothing and made something. That's what God is saying. Listen, he says, does the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Oh, man. Y'all, can I just, can I confess for some of y'all and myself that there have been times I ask God, what in the world are you doing? And let me be honest, I'm not asking God as I am trying to be informed and I'm inquiring, God, could you please help me understand what you're doing? No, I'm saying, God, what are you doing? God, what do you think you're doing with my life? How dare you put me through this? I know ain't nobody else going to say amen, but I can be honest with you. There are times that I, as the, as, the, as the pot, have looked at the potter and been worried about what I was seeing and said, how could you do this? And in those moments, I start trying to figure out in my own strength, in my own ability, God, I got to figure something out on my own because God, clearly, you don't know what you're doing. Because if you knew what you were doing, I wouldn't be in the pain that I'm in. Y'all, I wish I had somebody here to say amen for me because I really want to preach. Here, here, here it is. That God is saying, how, how can you ask that question? You are the clay. I am the potter. Let me do what I do. <laughs> I you, you are just an earthen pot. That makes sense. What are you making? Or, watch the text, your work has no handles. So you ain't doing it right. Oh, am I the only one that, that, you know, maybe you didn't say it in your prayer time, maybe you didn't write in your journal, but you can say, God, in my thoughts, I really feel like God don't know what he's doing. Okay, y'all not going to say amen. It's all right, I know the truth. Because sometimes we, we, we struggle with this, and we forget, watch this, we forget that we are under God, make a way out of no way, Lord. I'm, I'll work things out for my good. Well, if that's the case, if you want God to do it, hush. You are simply clay in the potter's hands. And the problem that we have, we want to be the potter and the clay. We, we want to be both. No, no, no. You, you have to allow God's hands to shape and mold your life and the environment that you're in, and you trust it. Watch the text. It says, verse 10, Woe to him who says to a father, what are you beginning? Or to a woman, what are you 
with what are you in labor? If it's not something that you're doing, you don't have the right to ask the question. Because you understand that you are under. Here's the thing I want you to catch. That God is doing the work. God is sovereign. Yeah. But here's one thing I want us to make sure we understand because I know this is going to get uh, 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 questions because a lot of times this question comes up, well, well if God is sovereign, why, why do my choices matter? This is what we call uh, in theology uh, antimony, where this idea of parallel truths that do not cross each other. Yes, one, here's the truth, that God is sovereign, but also the other truth is that God gives us free will. So what does this mean? That just because you have free will does not mean that God is not sovereign. We say it again. Just because you have free will does not mean that God is not sovereign. Your choices matter. Your choices absolutely matter. But even within the confines of your choices, God is still in control. Your choices won't change God, but your choices will change you. This is how evil and sin, because I've had this question, well, uh, a God, Pastor Ryan, if God is all loving and all powerful, why does he let bad things happen? Let me help you understand something. I believe one of the reasons why God allows for this is because God authentically loves us. I know you say, how does that make sense? Hear me. God authentically loves us, and in response to his authentic love, he wants authentic love. Real love, watch this, stay with me, does not force love. I'll say it again. Real love does not force love. It's not trying to make something or someone love you back. No, authentic love wants authentic love back. So God, in order for us to have authentic love back, he has to give us the ability to choose him. And so because he gives us the ability to choose him, in order for him to choose, for us to choose to love God and obey him, we also have to have the option to deny God and disobey him. So hear, hear what I'm saying. So I, I say it like this. God allows for sin and evil. He makes, he makes the opportunity for sin and evil, but man makes sin and evil real got to catch that. God makes the opportunity for sin and evil. He makes it possible, but man makes it real. Why? How do we make it real? With our choices. See, if someone does not have the option to love God, then it's not genuine love. We have to choose him. So our choices, listen to me, church, they matter. This free will that we have every single day in every single decision is an opportunity for us to choose the love of God because God chose to love us. Do you understand what you are under? Do you understand what you are under? Do, do you see what God has said? I love this picture of King Cyrus that sometimes we overlook that God uses this this king that's not a believer to show his sovereignty. Watch this. Let's go to Isaiah 45, verse 2 through 3. We're about to close right here. He says, I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and secret places and the horror, excuse me, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. Do you see that? He says, listen, says King Cyrus, says, I'm going to do this for you. Here's the key right here. Verse 4. Verse 4 is a game changer. He says, for the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen people. Oh, my God. He says, listen, it's not for the sake of Cyrus. It's, it's not for the king of Persia. It's for Jacob and the children of Israel that are in Babylonian exile. They are slaves at this point. He says, listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a Gentile, unbelieving king. I'm so sovereign, I'm so powerful that I can use whoever I want, whenever I want, however I want for my glory and purpose. Yeah. But here it is. You got to see this. Jacob and the children of Israel, watch this church, they don't even know what's going on. 
They, they, don't, they don't even know that, that God is somewhere else working for their good. Mm. See, this is what you got to remember. Your God is sovereign. You don't, you don't have to worry. You, you, you don't have to be concerned. You know that your God is sovereign. For 1 Corinthians chapter number 8, verse 5 through 6, 4, although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many idols. Yet for us, for us that are followers of Jesus Christ, there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ. Watch this. Through him are all things, and through him we exist. That if we are in Christ, we don't have to worry because we know God is over it. There's a song I learned when I was a little boy in Sunday school at St. James Baptist Church. My, my Sunday school teacher, Miss Kathy, she, she taught us this song. You may have heard it, but the song would simply say, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby, yeah, in his hands. I love this. Say, it's got uh, you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands. So got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the whole world. Yes, God. In his hands. See, when you understand that everything is in God's hands, you don't have to worry. See, let me tell you what you worry about. You worry about what you think is in your hands. God, help us. And the longer you think everything is in your hands, you're going to worry. The longer you think everything is in your hands, you'll battle anxiety. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. What you're struggling to carry with all your might and strength, God says, I can carry it in my hands. It's the sovereignty of God that gives me confidence, that gives me peace, that causes me to fall down and worship. Have you forgotten the greatness of your God? Do you not know that he created the sun, the moon, and the stars? Do you not know that he took dust and breathed life? And do you not know the greatness of our God? You're worried about tomorrow and he controls eternity. This is our God. He's got the whole world in his hand. Whole world in his hands. Whole world in his hands. Say that. World in his hands. Whole world in his hands. Whole world in his hands. Hands, whole world in his, in his, in his hands. What are you doing? It's in his hands. You lose losing sleep at night. It's in his hands. Whole world in his hands. Whole world in his hands. saying it whole world in his hands whole world in his hands my world in his hands my life in his hands my family in his hands my children God in his hands my future in his in his hands whole world in his hands whole world in his hands in his hands in his hands yes in his hands in his hands in his hands 
Remember that all things are in your hands. That you are sovereign. You don't just have power, you also have authority. Thank you, God. God, help us that when we worry and we struggle with anxiety, we remember even though we don't see it, we don't understand what's happening, we don't see the plan, we understand. you're trying to carry something on your shoulders that belongs in his hands. Whole world in his hands. Whole world in his hands. My life is in his hands. My life is in his hands. Some of us will worship God in heaven for eternity, or they're gonna worship God in hell. I heard one person say it like this, Mel, there are no atheists in hell. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The whole world is in his hands. And today, if you want to submit your life to Jesus Christ in God's perfect sovereignty and plan, he knew that you with your sins, with your flaws, with your unrighteousness, could never earn your way to heaven. You could never be good enough to be in relationship with God. It would demand that you would be perfect. The Bible says if you break one law, you break them all. Your lust, your, your, your flesh, your desires, anything outside of the will of God. God said, I, I know what I need to do. I, I'm going to cause through mankind. He made the promise sovereignly to Adam and Eve. So they were born a son, that, they were, that mankind would come and Jesus would come. 
and his heel would bruise the head of the same serpent that deceived Eve. And through his sovereign will, with all the things that happened in the Old Testament, with all the death promise and, and all the enslavement, they could not stop God's plan. Even the years of silence when God turned away from the people, they couldn't stop God's plan. And in a little manger, through a virgin by the name of Mary, God sent his son Jesus, and he grew up and lived a perfect life, and he died a sinner's death for you and I. It was the sovereignty of God. You know what else happened? Another little boy was born. God found a way to prick his heart when he was nine years old. And he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And he backslid and he messed up and he sinned over and over and over and over. But God still loved him. Finally, one day that boy surrendered his life to Jesus Christ and God called him to be on mission and to preach the gospel and called him to start a church in Hillsborough called Vertical and for some reason COVID-19 came through the sovereignty of God and now they're online everywhere and here you are today, you got an opportunity because of the sovereignty of God says to Cyrus, says, I know you by name. I called your name. I know who you are. God knows you. God knows your name. God called your name. He knew you before you were born. Today you have an opportunity to accept I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me from what? From the penalty and the power of sin. That's you today. All we want you to do is text the word. Text the word. with you. I want to help you understand what it means to be saved, to give your life to Jesus Christ, to have a new life in him, to put what's in your hands in his hands. That's what we want for you today. So that you can walk in confidence, peace, you can live on mission, which simply means now your life is whatever God wants it to be disciples that made disciples. You can have joy that you know the whole world is yours. Father, we thank you. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray.